Okay, so um, Neil's family has actually created a unnormalized table, um, which is actually a perfect example for us to be able to cover all of the parts of normalization and basically how to get from unnormalized to 3NF, but then also understanding the differences between 2NF and 3NF. So we'll start off. So at the minute, this is obviously some students and we have some um, schools here with some email addresses. Um, we have a lots of information here surrounding professors um, and scores across all different types of subjects. So we have to try and split this table up to ensure that we minimize data redundancy as much as possible. Um, we try to reduce memory. We try to ensure that we don't have anything um, called update anomalies. So update anomalies are basically in the case of if you were to have information that's exactly the same in different tables, then I'll give you one example. If we change the name of math to mathematics, then that should change into mathematics across the whole entire database. If it doesn't, then that would mean that there is an update anomaly. OK, so we don't like update anomalies. So now on to normalizing. So we're going to try and straight away try and normalize it to 3 and F. As I go through, I'll explain to you um, what the differences would be if it was in 2 and F. So first of all, we start with the basic. So this is we have the student name. Now, the thing that is missing in order to be able to get this into a um, 1NF is we need to ensure that there is an ID number. OK, so we need to have a primary key. Um, so we need to make sure that all of these have primary keys. And then we have to ensure that this bit here is atomic because right now there are two pieces of information in one column. So we can now separate these two to ensure that we have um, a normalized table. OK, so first of all, we can put in a student ID then we can put in the student age. Oops, sorry, student name. And we can put in student age. Sex and you put in, I'll explain to you about GPA in a minute. Let's put email address. What else we need to figure out? What else is related to the actual student? Now, straight away when we think of GPA, because this is a type of score, then we might assume that we would have to put it in the same table with other scores. Actually, we don't. The reason why is because GPA is directly related to each student. It's not directly related to each subject. So this is where we talk about dependencies. The dependency of the GPA is dependent upon the student, not the subject. OK, so 3.6 is determined by this student. OK, so GPA come in here. Then we're going to scoot across all these scores and we're going to push that to the side just for a second. And we'll have a look at the emergency contact name. And we have the phone number and we have the rank. Again, all of these are dependent upon the actual student ID. OK, now there's something really important that I want to talk about a bit later around dependency. OK, this is depending against a non prime attribute. Now, at the minute, this is a prime attribute because this will be a primary key. OK, I'm going to come back to these two in a minute so there's still some more work that needs to be done around that okay next thing that we need to figure out is our subjects so of course we have to give it a subject id and then we can give it a subject name okay we don't need to do subject one subject two subject three because these are just going to have normal subject ids okay so now one thing that i noticed is the professors here now, if the professor, let's say, for example, if I put in a subject ID, which is SU1, just as an example, and that subject is math. Now, the professor for math here is UB. OK. This professor, Duby teaches math. Therefore, that this column here is dependent on this subject. 
if this changes, then this would change. Okay, that's dependency. That's how dependency works. Now, in a 2NF, it allows the dependency to be, the professor is allowed to be depended on the subject. Okay, that's 2NF. 3NF doesn't allow that. 3NF, you have to have all of these, which are obviously, I said, non-prime. This is our prime because it's a primary key. Anything that's non-prime, which are these two, have to be directly related to the subject ID. Okay, so that means that the professor has to be related to the subject ID and should never, ever change. That is the only way that we can put a professor name in here. But then I noticed something here that Doobie also teaches English. Oh, sorry, we know that Doobie teaches English. Sorry, there was another one that I spotted. Um, just checking here. Yeah, there we are. Doobie also teaches math. Okay, now this can be a problem because if Doobie teaches math, that means that the sub the professor is no longer dependent on the subject. Okay. Doobie doesn't depend on English anymore. So what would end up happening here is that we would write math and then we have Doobie, but see here, he teaches math in many, many other areas. Okay, what we can then do is that we can see that there is a tendency for one professor to be able to teach multiple subjects. If that's the case, then we have to remember that this can end up meaning that the professor doesn't rely on the subject here itself. It can rely on the subject ID. So therefore, professor can have his own ID. Now, what that means is, is that the professor ID, let's say that um, he decides that he wants to teach English, and this is Doobie, so it's D0001, for example, This information doesn't need to be there if it's here, okay? Because we won't need that anymore. I'll explain to you why right now. And it all lies into our fourth table. Our fourth table is when we can bring the information together in a table called scores. All we need is student ID. Then we need our subject ID. And this is when we can put our professor ID. Now remember, we do not need to put, we do not need this table if, if it was clear that there was the same teacher, can you see here, English for Doobie, and then we have English for Ranbir. Can you see that? The professor changes each time. Because we know that the professor changes each time, we know that the professor is not dependent on the subject. One professor can teach many different subjects. OK, so we need a student ID, subject ID and professor ID because we know that that might change. OK, then we can put in our score for this subject. OK, now you can do this in many different ways. Even if you had, let's say, a student ID, you had SU001 okay? and then we had a subject ID. Now remember, we need to, because this could be the same here, 001, and that's, let's say that's maths, and that's English, we still have a problem because this table needs to have a primary key, and if it's got these two here, then you can't. So then what we need to do is we need to then insert a column for here. I could have just shifted it all right. And we can put test ID. And therefore, we have T001, T002, and whatnot. Okay, that would be okay. And then we have a professor ID, and we have the score, and we have all the information there. Okay, now what I was going back to here, now knowing what we know, I'm hoping that you'll, um, down to what we're talking about here with the dependencies, hopefully, you'll spot what we need to do here. So at the minute, for it to be 3NF, we have to remember that each column has to be related to the initial primary 
attribute. But unfortunately, in this case, the phone number is dependent on the contact. Okay, so if that's the case, that means that we can't, it can't be in 3 and F. This has to be put into a different um, table because we, the phone number is dependent on the contact. The phone number is not dependent on the student ID. Remember, this is the phone number of the emergency contact. So therefore, our emergency contact would need emergency contact. Let's say ID, because remember, we always need to have a primary key. And then we have emergency name, emergency phone number. Okay, so if we have E001, that would then mean I can get rid of this and just put emergency contact ID. I can move rank now to here. Again, remember, rank is dependent here on the student ID. The rank is not dependent on the test. It's not dependent on the professor. It's not dependent on the subject. It only changes when the student ID changes. OK, so hopefully that has kind of by the way, you would never, ever get anything this complicated. You would never, ever get that in the test. This is kind of um, it just it's just a very, very good example to show you dependency and how it works. In um, the test, what you most likely get is a, it told you, it will give you some unnormalized data, which would only probably be about be that big. Okay, so it won't be as big as this. And you'll have basically table one, which is usually things like students or clients in some way. Then table two, which will probably be the services that are to be offered. And then the last table, table three, which is basically bringing them all together. So you'd have an ID here, you'd have an ID there with the other attributes. So remember, this is always a prime attribute. And here, anything down here would be non-prime attributes. Okay. And so table three would be bringing it all together. So table three would have its own ID. Remember, it has to have its own transactional ID. Then you can take an ID from table one and then link it to the table two ID. Okay, and then other non prime attributes would be here. Okay, that's where we've, what we've tried to do here in the scores table. Our scores table is basically our table three, it's kind of bringing in all the different information together. So by using these ID numbers, you see. That's bringing in all the different tables together, and then we can bring its non-prime attribute, which is the score. Okay, and that's pretty much it. So, like I said, the differences between two and F, you need to make sure that you you get that full understanding of the dependency on a non-prime attribute. A three and F would only be dependent on the prime attribute. Okay, which is always your usually is the primary key. There are some cases where you can have something with a composite key. A composite key would mean that you use two keys in order to create a primary key. Now, what I mean by that is this. We can delete this emergency contact ID. OK, and we have a separate table. With emergency name and emergency phone number. Now, the emergency name here. is in. A composite key would mean that you would then be able to use both keys together in order to create the primary key. Now, what that means is, is that we use both of them here and we'd only put in emergency name. We know already that, let's say we put name in here. We know we can link it to this table here. And it uses two of these because we would never, ever, ever. This is on the reliance that you would never, ever, ever have an emergency phone number with a name. But we know in real life, if this was a much larger database, because we know I can see the information here that you'll never have this number with that name. But the problem is in the real world, you obviously that's that's very normal. 
there'll be many different types of emergency names that are the same. Okay, but this is just an example. It's it's not. Um, you probably just need to have an understanding that it's it's two prime attributes that can make up a key. That's basically it. But um, the most the majority of all the examples that you'll see would be covering something like this. Oh, sorry, would be covering something like that. 